Microsoft Purview, data mapping capabilities, what's it all about? Let's find out. So what exactly is the Microsoft Purview data map? In brief, it's a visual representation of data landscapes. It provides a clear view of your data assets. It shows how data flows across your systems. It helps you to understand the relationships and identify connections between those data assets that you have and enhances comprehension of data interactions. In a little bit more detail, it's a foundational component of Microsoft Purview that provides a unified view of your data estate, allowing you to register, discover, understand and manage your data assets across various data sources. And it helps you to register those data sources and you can register various data sources, including on-premises, multi-cloud, and SaaS data sources to create a comprehensive map of your data estate. Helps you also to discover and classify data. Data map helps you to discover and classify data across your registered data sources and helps you to understand the data's sensitivity and compliance requirements. Also helps you to manage data assets that you can organize into collections and domains and making it easier to govern and secure your data and to track data lineage, allowing you to track the flow of data across your data estate. And this helps in understanding data dependencies and impact analysis. Okay, so before we get into some examples of what it looks like and how it actually works, a bit of a demo if you like, let's understand some of the prerequisites. Number one, you need to have a Microsoft Entra tenant associated with your subscription. This is essential for managing identities and access. Next, an Azure subscription is required to deploy Microsoft Purview and its managed resources. If you don't have an Azure subscription, you can create a free one before you begin. Also, you need resource providers. You need to register specific Azure resource providers in your subscription. These include Microsoft.Storage, Microsoft.EventHub, which is optional, and Microsoft.Purview. You need the appropriate permissions. Depending on the tasks you plan to perform, you may need specific roles and permissions. For example, the information protection administrator role is required if you plan to extend Microsoft 365 sensitivity labels to the Microsoft Purview data map, which is something that I'm going to cover when we get into the demo in a moment. The Power BI administrator role is also required if you're planning to scan Power BI tenants. And Event Hub configuration. If you plan to use a managed Event Hub, you need to configure an existing Event Hub's namespace during the Microsoft Purview account creation, which allows you to publish messages to the Event Hub and consume and process them in Microsoft Purview. Okay, so that sets the scene a little bit. Let's get into how you get going with this within Microsoft Purview. So here we are in the Microsoft Purview portal, purview.microsoft.com. And the first thing you need to do in order to make sure that you can use the data map is you need to ensure you have an enterprise Purview account and you need to upgrade from the free type account that you see here. So click on upgrade account. Then you'll need to select your Azure subscription that you want to use with it and also a resource group. It gives you some details below that about the tier that will be provisioned and the capacity units with auto scaling capabilities. So learn more about that. Click on the learn more and make sure you understand about exactly what that's going to mean for you. Then you have to acknowledge that you've read and understood the terms and conditions and click on upgrade. Next, You'll see this screen almost ready to upgrade. You just need to give a name for the resource. And in this example, I've called it Peter Resource All One Word. It confirms the subscription that you are going to use and the resource group you've chosen and the location. In this case, I have selected UK's South location. So now we can click on confirm and there we have it. We've successfully upgraded to Microsoft Purview Enterprise. Okay, next, we can see all of that detail in our account overview. We've got much more in there now. Account type is enterprise, Azure resource links, consent state. You've successfully consented to the new Purview business model. We are good to go. 
So now we can get started in the data map and we can find this by searching for it within Purview or we can browse to it from the solutions button on the left side panel. We can see it highlighted here. We can see that we have a resource already created here called Peter Resource. This is our domain and we need to create a new collection. And the intent of this is that I want to connect to a Dynamics 365 instance in this example. There's lots of other things you can connect to using the data map, but Dynamics 365 is what I'm going to have as my example. Okay, so we click on new collection and we can confirm all the details here, display name, Peter's data source, description, data source to connect to D365. Again, just recall that that should say Peter's collection and collection to connect to D365. You have to select an admin user as well, and I've chosen one right here, and then we can click on create. And this is what you get. You get next right into that data source uh, screen, and you can choose to register the data source within the collection that you've just created. So click on register, and you'll get a full list of data sources that you can choose from. And that includes things like Microsoft Fabric, and it includes things like the Dataverse here, or which is in preview. And just a reminder, do be careful about preview features as they are subject to change. So I've searched for Dataverse here because I know that Dataverse is what we need to choose in order to select a Dynamics 365 environment from the data map. So we select Dataverse Preview, we click Continue, and then we've got to fill in our data source name. It gives us a generic name. We can change that if we want. We've got to browse to our environment. And if we go to the next screen here, we can see our data source name, put the Dynamics 365 environment URL. We've chosen our domain, which is Peter Resource. We've got our collection, which is Peter's collection. We click on register, and this is what you get. We can see that we've got our resource at the top, which is actually our domain. We've got our collection in the middle there, all nicely labeled in red. We've got our data source, which is connecting us to Dataverse FNT, which is going to allow us to connect to Dynamics 365 and do a scan. Good stuff. And now we need to run that new scan. So right from within that data source that we've just created, Dataverse FNT, I've gone into that. I can click on new scan and here we can put in a name for the scan. We can call it what we want or it suggests a name for us. It connects with integration runtime. The environment URL is already there. We can select the credential we want to use with it and the scan level. And we've got the domain and the collection there as well. So let's just take a little bit more of a detailed look at how that all comes together. Okay. So the first thing we need to choose is our credential. And we have two choices here. We can select the managed identity, the Microsoft Purview MSI system, or we can create a new credential. And what we need to choose there if we're going for that option is a service principle. So a couple of options there. For this example, I went for service principle. Right, next, the scan level. A few options here. We can have auto detect, which default applies the highest level supported. Level one, extract basic information and metadata. Level two, extracts schema for structured file types and database tables. And level three, extracts schema where applicable and subjects the sample file to system and can't see what that's actually saying off the end of the screen, but never mind. So when we're happy with all of that, we need to click on continue or we can actually click on test connection. Either will have the same effect. It's going to test the connection and assure that you can get connected to that data source before you can move on. Now, as I record this video, my scan has not actually completed yet, but I want to set the scene for this process. I will come back and show you in another video what that looks like when the scan is completed and how that can be properly applied in Purview's sensitivity labels, which is what you actually have to do next. So with that in mind, we jump away from the data map. We go into create a new sensitivity label and we want to select file and other data assets as the scope of our label. And this is because what we want here is to choose other data assets as the method. And to do that, we need to have an auto labeling policy to apply it automatically based on conditions. We can increase the protection by also creating a protection policy to control access to labeled access or assets rather in Azure storage and Azure SQL. So 
we need this label to label files and data assets in 365 or Fabric, which includes Power BI and Azure, also Dynamics 365 in this case, and we need that label policy. So we can go next, we can choose the protection settings that we want to apply. We go next again, we can choose the, um, the categories, the sensitive information types that we want the label to have, and then the auto labeling policy in this case is what we're doing. You'll notice at the top left there, we're, we're into the policy now. Uh, we want to auto apply when the, uh, the content matches, in this case, UK financial data. We name our auto labeling policy D365 asset labeling to label D365 content scanned by the data map. And then we choose the label to auto apply that data map for Dynamics 365 label that we created just a couple of steps ago. There we go. We create that new sensitivity label. And then this is the policy. This is what it's going to be called. That's the label we're going to browse back to. And then what we see here is we can't see the location we want to select yet. We can only see SharePoint sites and OneDrive accounts. And you can see highlighted here, though, that once the scan is completed, we should be able to see that in there. And it says here you can now apply labels to assets in non-Microsoft 365 locations like Azure and Amazon S3. Or in our case, we're, we're going to try and do it to Dynamics 365. So we need to register and scan those data sources. So we've registered, and I'm running a scan right now from the data map so they can be included in the auto-labeling policy. So that's where we're at. So we can set up the rules for our policy, common or advanced. We can then run the policy and simulation mode uh, for up to seven day period and then review the results and decide to turn it on whenever we're ready. And that really is it. Your auto labeling policy is created. So everything we need is in place, good to go. The only thing we're actually waiting for is our scan now. So let's wind up the video there and talk a little bit about what we've done and what it means and what we can do next. So there you have it, a mix of theoretical and practical there. I've demoed to where I'm up to, and you can be sure that I will do another video when I've got that scan result. But just to recap, what have we done there exactly? We have gone into purview. We have gone into the data map section. From our domain, we have created a collection. We have connected that collection to a data source using the dataverse data source type and chosen to link that to the url of a dynamics 365 instance from there i've initiated a scan using a service principle and i selected the auto scan capabilities there that scan is running so once it's finished We'll have a, a deeper look at that and more of a, a hands-on demo rather than going through some slides of this is what I did earlier. And after that, what we did is we got a label created. We created a label which is targeted to uh, the, the data source, the that, that type. And then we created an auto-labeling policy which referenced that label and applied it under certain conditions when sensitive information types were created. So I think the data map, just summing up, is really, really cool. As a first sort of experimentation into it, I think it has massive potential. I'm excited to see what it can do here with Dynamics and with other data sources as well. I think it's a great example of how Azure Purview Microsoft Purview have been brought together in this unified Purview compliance portal, all in one place, all of these features coming together, lots more features coming into play. I think it's absolutely wonderful that this is available to us. So let me know what you think. Have you experimented with this yourself yet? Have you had any success, any problems connecting to those data sources that you want to try using the data map with? I'm interested to hear what your experience is as ever. Let's wind up the video there for today. If you've liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Please hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to the channel. It does help me so much. Hit the notifications bell as you do so as well so you never miss a video on the channel. And if you want to give something back to the channel and help support me even more, you can click on the join button and see the various levels of membership available. You can get members-only videos for only 99 pence. 
per month. There you go. That's about it for today, everybody. Thank you for watching. Thanks for your continued support. Take care, stay safe, travel well, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.